Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about a new printer I'm designing. This is the hot end for the printer I'm designing. Nah, it's just a, a model for teaching people. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys how to rebuild a hot end on a Creality style printer. So, in Tinkercad, I blew up uh, a model of a Creality hot end. I designed it one to one and then I expanded it to 500% in my slicer. And then saved those and uploaded the Thingiverse. So this is a pretty accurate representation of what the hot end on your 3D printer looks like. And a lot of people have trouble with the hot end not functioning correctly and I'm going to show you why that happens and how to fix it. The primary problem, this model you can take apart so we can see the inside, but let's go over the parts first. This is your coupler. This is your PTFE tube. Your filament goes inside this tube. This is your heat sink. This is the cold end of the hot end. This is your heat block, or the hot side of the hot end. The tube going up the middle is your heat break, and this is your nozzle. This is where your heater cartridge and your thermistor would go. So that little heater cartridge, the red wires, that goes in here and makes this block hot. And your thermistor, which gives your temperature feedback to your printer, goes in here. And there's usually a little screw that holds that in place. Um, this is where the two screws that screw the actual unit into your printer go. So on your printer, this would screw into that backing plate with the two holes here. You may or may not have two screws going through the sides here on the left and right of the nozzle into the block. Those are fine. You can leave them there. Um, so let's go over how to do this. You'll, you'll either experience problems because this was incorrectly assembled or you'll experience problems after changing a nozzle for whatever reason. That problem is on the inside. So let's break this apart. This is what the inside of your unit looks like. Okay. So this is a cutaway. That cutaway won't actually be there. This tube will go all the way down to here. And this nozzle screws into this tube, so there's a threaded portion there. And then inside is the PTFE tube. A PTFE lined hot end is literally what you see here. The PTFE tube, that white tube on your printer, goes all the way down and touches the nozzle. Um, that's why it eventually breaks down, because it's in the hottest part of the printer right there. Now, usually what will happen is you'll get clogging or jamming or something like that. It won't be heat creep, it'll just be jammed for whatever reason. And that reason will be usually a gap right here. So what happens is if this PTFE tube does not meet up directly with the nozzle inside your hot end, you have a gap here. That gap is a place where filament can run to because it's molten in here and it will fill Basically, it'll make a washer inside of there between the nozzle and the PTFE tube. And that filament will cook off. It'll bake, kind of like sugar going bad if you cook it too hot. And when it does that, it's going to start globbing up. It'll either introduce little spurts into your print, and you'll get little black stuff coming out every now and then. Or it'll just jam up, and if you don't film it, it won't be able to push through. It's because you'll have that cooked off globular mess sitting right there. What you need is for that gap to be zero. The PTFE tube needs to perfectly touch the nozzle, and I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing, unplug this so it stops going off. When you take apart the printer, you're going to pull out the PTFE tube, which comes out of the inside of the printer. Okay, so there's your PTFE tube. That's usually that long tube that goes all the way back to your feeder unit. That's the actual unit with the stepper motor that drives the filament through. That's the feeder. This is the hot end. The combination of both of those pieces is your extruder. Okay, um, So if you take your printer apart, your hot end apart, you'll end up with all these individual parts. So this is your heat sink. This is your hot block. Okay, This is your compression fitting. And this is your nozzle. Usually what you'll do is you'll install this into the printer. It's a little bit of a tough squeeze in here. I made these fit together pretty tightly for demonstration purposes. And your hot block installs. I'm gonna leave the other halves off so that we can see the inside now. And your hot block installs like that, okay? Now, the trick to installing this assembly together is that first you install 
the heat block all the way into the hot block. But you're not going to be taking that apart. That's most likely already there. So you're going to change nozzles. So you're thinking, okay, let's put the new nozzle on. No. You don't want to put the new nozzle on yet. That's the worst thing you can do because if you have anything in here in a gap, your nozzle is going to go back to where it was and that gap is still going to be there. So the first thing you need to do is to put the PTFE tube inside the hot end and you need to push it all the way through until it pops out the other end. You want to push this all the way into your printer until it comes out the other side like that. And that's really important because if this does not come out the other side, that means you have something in here and you need to get it out. Usually, just shoving your PTFE tube in there will break free and push whatever's in there out. If it doesn't, you might actually have to go in there with a skinny little Allen key from the downside here and start poking around and figure out where that obstruction is and get rid of it. Um, but in the end, you need to be able to push the PTFE tube all the way through so it comes out the bottom end. Once you do that, you can pull your PTFE through back through, okay? You screw your nozzle all the way in until it stops, okay? No gap. Push it in until it stops. You screw it in until it stops. Don't go crazy. You're going to have to put a pair, a wrench on here to stop this from turning because otherwise you'll damage the wires coming out of this end and then you screw your nozzle in all the way while holding the hot block with a wrench. It's a little easier with the screws in here because it keeps it from twisting as much, but still, put a wrench on here, a pair of pliers on here. Um, be sure to put it on the two faces that don't have the wires so you don't damage your heater cartridge or your thermistor. They are easy to damage. Now, what you're then gonna do is you're gonna put your fitting on, okay, all the way. And then you're gonna back the fitting out two turns, two full rotations, you're gonna back that fitting out. Then you're gonna slide your PTFE tube all the way in until it stops. Then you're gonna lift up on this compression fitting, the little, little switch here, that little, you have to depress it, the little white ring, lift up and give a tug on the PTFE tube. Push it back in, give it a tug. Make sure it's actually locked in place and does not pull back out. Once you've done that, you then finish turning this, the last two rotations, until it goes all the way in. And what you end up with is your hot end assembled like that. Now this is important because the reason you have this backed off two turns is so that if there is a little gap here from the play in the compression fitting, closing it that final two turns will push the PTFE, that little last bit, into the nozzle and make sure they are actually butted up against each other clean. It's also important to make sure before you put that new nozzle in that there's no filament on this part of the nozzle. Inside's okay, but this mating face of the nozzle right here, the part that actually sits on something that needs to be clear of filament so that it can properly butt up right against the PTFE tube. Now once you have this reassembled reheat the nozzle up and before you put any filament in put a wrench back on here and snug this up again after it's hot just to make sure don't crank it you will break this if you crank it too tight but just give it a little last tug to make sure it's actually fully seated after it's reheated because sometimes it'll turn just a little bit more once it's hot when things expand. That's it. You do that and you'll have no gap in here and you will have no problems with your hot end. It'll feed properly. It won't give you any trouble. If the end of your PTFE tube is a little cooked, so it's a little crusty, it's got some gunk in it, snip off the last inch of the PTFE tube. Use a straight razor, lay it on the table and gently go back and forth and slice through it. Don't try to clamp through it because you'll crush the PTFE tube. You do not want this PTFE tube crushed, okay? This PTFE tube needs to be round and flat so that it mates properly with the nozzle. You can use the Capricorn tool to do this or just a straight razor, carefully hold it up, inspect it, make sure it's actually flat. I even use the little nippers to make sure if there's a little high spot, I take the high spot off, but you need to make sure you have a good mating joint between the PTFE tube and the nozzle. And then that last final two turns of the compression fitting will force the two together. Don't back this off too far, two turns is enough. If you go too far, you could damage the mechanism in here that holds the PTFE tube, or you could buckle the PTFE tube against the nozzle, which will restrict the flow of filament passing through. Capricorn tube, same idea, it's the same exact process. Do a cold pull, 
So heat the nozzle up, push the filament in, wait until it's oozing nice and smoothly out of the nozzle, and then smoothly and rapidly, but don't yank, but just smoothly and rapidly pull the filament back out. That will ensure that you get the bulk of the filament out of the hot end. And then of course, once you take it apart, anytime you change the PTFE tube, I you can sometimes get away with not removing the nozzle. If you shine a light after you take off this compression fitting and take out the PTFE tube, I just broke that, but after you take out the PTFE tube, you can look down inside of there, and if you see the brass ring of the top of the nozzle, that part right there, you're good. If you see filament on that brass ring, I would suggest removing the nozzle, punching the PTFE through, make sure the throat is all the way cleaned out, and follow the instructions to reassemble the hot end. If you see a clean brass ring with no filament on that brass ring, then you're good to go. Reinstall your new PTFE tube. Don't forget, put the compression fitting on, but only back it off too, install the PTFE, lift and lock, give it a tug, give it a push, make sure it's all the way in there, then finish tightening this the last two turns and your hot end will be correctly assembled. The problems people are having are a result of this tube not being fully inserted into the hot end and the result is that gap. And that gap is what causes your problems with the hot end. That's how you fix it. If you have any questions, ask down below. I'll answer the best I can. If um, Also, of course, make sure your fan for the heatsink is working. A lot of times people get clogs and jams because this fan dies. And what happens is if this is not cooled properly, the heat moves up the heat break and starts heating up the PTFE tube up here. And what happens when you heat up these plastics? They expand. When the plastics expand, they get tighter inside the tube. And if enough filament in here gets too tight expanding inside the tube, your motor can't push the filament. The drag is too high and you end up with a jam. And you'll know this because when you do your pull, it's really hard to pull the filament all the way out. And when you get it out, you're going to see that this portion of the filament in here is bulged a little bit. That's what's happening. Most likely when you get that, it's because this fan here is dying. Not the parts cooling fan on the side, but the one on the front that blows into the red heat sink or blue heat sink. That one is probably dying, so it might be time to look to replace that. Um, some people have had marginal heat creep, and removing these two screws in here have helped with that. But if your fan is working properly, you should not have to remove those screws. Those screws are a passage for heat to get from the heat block to the cold end, but this cold end is enough to keep the filament from expanding as long as that fan is working correctly. So usually having to remove these is an indicator that your fan is dying and it might be time to replace it or it's just dirty. If you get if you ever if you have any ceiling fans in your house, you'll know they blow a lot less air when they're covered in dust. So go in there with a can of compressed air, clean off your fan, clean off the fins, make sure everything's clean, especially if you're in a dusty environment and go from there. If you have any questions, ask down below. This model is available on Thingiverse. I will provide a link down below where you can print this out. Do be sure to follow the directions. You should be able to just straight up print all these parts. You will have to shave this down a little bit with your deburring tool. What I did was I just took my deburring tool like this and I just started shaving little bits of plastic off. And I just kept doing that all the way around until I got a nice snug fit. The reason it's like that is that you want this to be a friction fit so it stays put, okay? Now, you may have to shrink the heat break a little bit to get it to fit your print. So print these two parts first, then take your heat break and flip it over. Actually, it already is that way. It's already printing this way down. So just print one inch of it. So print one inch of the, of the heat break. So tell your printer to stop at 25 millimeters and see if it fits. If it doesn't, shrink it a little bit. Check the fit again. Shrink it by half a millimeter each time. And uh, not on not on Z. So decouple your axes so it only shrinks it on X and Y. But don't shrink it on Z. You want the length to stay the same. Okay. So you shrink it on X and Y by half a millimeter until it fits in here. It should be a smooth but somewhat friction fit, meaning you should be able to move the part, but it should stay put once you put it on place. Now, once you do that. Your next task is to find the right scale to print the PTFE tube sample. This would be difficult to print on a Ender printer. You would need a CR10, but you can print it on an Ender printer. It just might end up a little bit short, which is okay, because you can take this off and there it is. Um, print it in vase mode at 125% extrusion. Print one inch of it, test the fit. It should fit in like this easily, okay? It's a little tight in my heat break. I gotta reprint my heat break, but um, 
keep adjusting it until it fits properly inside the heat brake. Once you get the fit properly, you're good to go. The magnets linked are these 10 millimeter by three millimeter magnets. I think they're 10, they might be 12, they're 10 or 12. They're linked in the thingiverse. But um, put the four magnets in here and in here, then just drop the other four magnets on top of here and then press them into the other part. So line the other part up and push the magnets into the holes like that. If you need to, use the deburring tool to run through the hole like this to put a little bevel in the hole. That'll make it easier to put the magnets in. Drop a CA glue and you're good to go. The reason you do that is so that you don't get magnets with reverse polarities, in which case this is not going to go on. It's going to push away because one of the magnets is reversed. So put the four magnets in, glue them in place, drop the other four magnets on top, put the parts together, press fit. Let the glue dry for a couple of minutes and then you'll be able to pull them apart and fully seat those magnets, make sure they're all the way in there before the glue dries. Same thing with this, put the four magnets in, drop the other four magnets on top, put the parts together, press them in place, pop it off, press all the magnets in, make sure they're all fully inserted, wait for the glue to dry, and you're good. You now have a supersize Creality hot end. This is a this looks just like the Creality hot end. It's very similar to all the Chinese printers. They all use roughly the same style hot end. Even if yours looks a little different, it functions basically the same as this because of the popularity and commonality of Creality. I model it after that. Maybe later on, if I have time, I'll make cutaways of some other types of hot ends, but they all function about the same. So if you have any questions, ask down below. If you want to go print this, it's down there on Thingiverse. Don't forget my links down below, Patreon and PayPal in the description. I appreciate it. And if you want to know what this is, too damn bad, I'm not telling you. <laughs> You're going to have to wait until the live stream for that. I'll see you guys later.